please. All right, Felicia, thank you so much. Um, welcome guys. So my name's Emily, I'm here with Sweet Sugar Bell and we're gonna be teaching you some fun Halloween cookie designs. Halloween is my favorite holiday. I always tell my husband that Halloween starts in September so that I can continue it all month long. So I'm glad to be doing a Halloween cookie decorating class here in September. So for this class, we're talking specifically about shape-shifting our cookies. Um, Sweet Sugar Bell is really big on shape-shifting. We've got this huge set of cookie cutters. Um, it's our 80-piece set, and that's where we found the cutter for this class. So the cutter for this class is going to be this uh, skull cutter. So I'm going to teach you how to decorate it as a skull, and then we also have a couple of fun flips to make it into different shapes. So we're gonna be doing a skull, a potion bottle, and a crystal ball. So we're gonna start out with our skull cookie. So I'm gonna take one of these blank cookies. For the skull, we're gonna turn it up with the big round part up at the top, okay? Um, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do when working with royal icing is you wanna outline your cookies with a thick royal icing consistency. When I think of my outline consistency, I like to go with like a toothpaste consistency. Um, the way that you kind of adjust your consistency is make the original recipe, and we did include the recipe to Sweet Sugar Bell's uh, Royal Icing in, it should be in your chat, Felicia's got that for you. Um, once you make it, you then add just water a little itty bitty bit at a time and mix it in until you get the consistency that you want. I prefer to add my water when I first started out with a spray bottle so that I didn't end up adding too much water because it's a lot harder to bring it back to a thicker consistency and it can cause issues with how it dries. So we never want to thin it out too much. So this is my uh, outline consistency of my white icing. It's just in one of the Sweet Sugar Bell uh, piping bags and I just cut it off as like a tipless bag since we're just using it for outlining. If you're going to be doing more details, I would recommend putting a tip in here but um, we're just not doing some pretty basic stuff with this white, so I didn't bother. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and just pipe an, a line around the outside of this cookie with our white icing. And sometimes if you leave the icing in the bag for too long, the end will kind of clog up. So you can kind of clean that out with your finger or a wet rag. So the most important thing when you're outlining your cookies is let gravity do the work. The closer that you hold the bag to the cookie, the less control you have. And it will feel like the opposite. And you will want to hold it right next to the cookie, but I promise you, the more you get used to holding it further away, the cleaner your outline will be. So I'm just using medium pressure on this piping bag and letting the icing fall along the outside. If you do end up with any that comes in like this on the edge here, don't worry about that because we're gonna be filling the whole cookie in anyway. So put that outline on there. Um, also, wow, I already forgot a whole step. So your outline can be there and it will be fine, but I actually am gonna take some flood consistency of black icing. So I like to not use black icing on most of my cookies because it will dye your mouth. But for Halloween and kids cookies, you never can go wrong with just dyeing your mouth a fun black color, right? So my uh, flood consistency, I like to think of it as like shampoo. You want it to flow. When you lift up your spoon out of the bowl, it should flow in like a ribbon. Um, I know Sweet Sugar Bell does have um, some blog posts on her website specifically about uh, consistencies. So when I do this part of my skull cutter cookie, I like to use the Sweet Sugar Bell scraper, but you can also use the uh, scraper, the small double-ended scraper that you can use to remove mistakes. I just like this because it gives me a lot of surface area to work with. And I'm just gonna take my bottle and I'm gonna squirt that thin icing along the edge of my scraper. And I'm gonna scrape it across where his eyes and nose will be. When you're working with dark icing colors, especially if you're working with white, you want to be very careful that your dark icing doesn't bleed the color into your white. So I always like to put the dark color underneath if possible. And this way, I don't have to worry as much about keeping my black circles for the shape of his eye perfect because I'm going to draw them on with white over top of this. One of my favorite things that people do with Halloween cookies that I see all the time on Instagram 
is while this icing is still wet, they'll spray it with like a silver or a black edible glitter, which will make his eyes kind of sparkle. I didn't do that this time, but that's definitely something you could add if you wanted to add something kind of a little exciting. So basically we're just covering with a very thin layer of this thin black icing, which doesn't want to come out of the bottle, but that's okay. And we're gonna just scrape it on there. Before we do our next step, you want to make sure that that thin layer of black is dry. So once again, so it doesn't seep up into the white. So essentially right now, it just looks like this. It's not that exciting yet. We just have black scraped on there. I'm going to TV magic and I'm going to pull out one that's already dry so that we can keep going here. But see how we just scraped that on there. So now I'm going to outline this one real fast with our white so that you guys can kind of outline and scrape as we go. Again, if you don't have the big scraper, this works, or you could use just a butter knife. The backside of a butter knife works really well. You don't have to have like a lot of fancy tools, but I will say Sweet Sugar Bell does a good job of making it very easy when you use their tools. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick outline on this skull cookie for us. So like I said, especially with round shapes, you want to keep the icing bag as far away from the cookie as you can and let that icing fall where it will. Okay, so now that I've got my outline done, um, you can take a Sweet Sugar Bell marker or any food coloring marker. Sometimes if you have like another color, it's a little easier, especially when we're writing on black. And we did give you a template of the shape of the skull guy's face. I like to just wing it because, you know, they're homemade cookies. It's okay if they're not perfect. If they're a little lumpy on one side or his eyes aren't exactly the same size, um, it's made by hand and people will expect it to be, you know, not quite perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and just sketch on the shape I want for my skull's eyes using this pen. And remember that we're going to be covering the edges. So if your circle's not exactly perfect, don't stress it. And then you want to do his nose. Okay, for his nose, I like to give him a shape, kind of like an upside down heart. And then when you flood it in, it's going to kind of fill that in. So we'll do an upside down heart shape here for his nose. I also like to draw it slightly bigger than I think I need it because the flood icing sometimes will end up kind of creeping in and it'll make it smaller. So if you want it to be very obvious, maybe make it a slightly bigger than you think you need. So now we're gonna pull out our uh, outline consistency one more time. And we're gonna go ahead and pipe over what we just drew. Um, it Again, it's super tempting to get really close to that cookie but especially with those round shapes like the eyes, you're gonna get a more round shape if you let the icing do the work. <laughs> and just a reminder guys, if you have any questions while we're going, um, my other, my counterpart, the other Emily is answering questions in the chat and she can give those to me so that um, we can answer any questions that you guys have. So I'm just gonna put an outline around uh, the shape that I drew so that it has a barrier to hold in the flood icing. So I always like to let my outline dry for at least 30 seconds um, because even though it is thicker, we want to give it a chance to fully dry so that that flood icing doesn't seep in and cover our black face that we drew for him. So we're going to give it, give it just a second to do that. Um, I put all of my flood icing in these Sweet Sugar Bell uh, squeeze bottles. These are really nice. We've got them with a number two tip. That's going to give you a good control over how much icing is coming out. I do find that if you don't have a lot of icing in there, you got to kind of shake it to the bottom, but make sure you put your finger under there. You're going to end up with icing all over your kitchen, which I've done. You can, yeah, it, it's not fun. So uh, we're going to just shake that to the bottom. Okay. So now that we've got, um, I think towards the bottom of our bottle, I'm going to go ahead and start flooding this cookie. I like to get low so I can kind of get over it. And if I'm blocking it with my head, please let me know so that 
you guys can see what I'm doing. I have a bad habit of walking with my head. So we want to flood this. You want to put it pretty close to the edge for the first go around without letting it go over the edge. That burial do, will do a pretty good job. It almost feels like magic of holding the icing in, but you want to give it the best shot it can. So if you have to use your uh, scribe tool to kind of push it towards the edge after, that's better than having it flood over. So we're gonna go around. I like to use this little cookie turntable. It's not necessary. You can always turn the cookie yourself, but it does make it a lot easier to just keep going with the icing and not have to worry about picking up and moving your cookie a lot. Um, Cause that's when I tend to get icing all over my hands. So now we're gonna come in around our uh, outline here as well, get it close with that flood consistency. And just be very careful that you don't put too much icing like right there between his eyes so that it overflows into the eyes area. Now, the hard thing with royal icing is you do have to let all of these layers dry. It's not an instantaneous hobby. So you have to have a little bit of patience. But then the cool thing about it is you can package these cookies. You can put them in like little cellophane bags and individually package them, or you can stack them on top of each other and they're not gonna damage each other because the icing does uh, dry hard, which is really nice. So you can see that I didn't quite fill in every little dot. I know on Instagram, you always see them and they flood in so beautifully. That's just really not the case most of the time. I always take my little scribe tool, my little needle tool, and it comes in this set from Sweet Sugar Bell. So she does have this set here of all these different supplies. Um, and I love this one because it's got a very sharp pin at the end, so be careful, but that helps get a smooth look to your icing. So you can just kind of use it to kind of swirl around the icing to the edges and make sure that we've filled in all the gaps. Um, if your icing isn't drying quite as smooth as you would like, or it's not filling in quite as smooth as you would like, you can always kind of tap the cookie or tap your swivel and that'll uh, kind of level it out for you. So now you can see we have kind of our little skeleton face going on. So I would let this layer dry for at least an hour if you're gonna just be leaving it on the counter. Um, if you want them to dry faster, a lot of times you can put them in front of a fan on the table. Just be careful that it's not blowing directly on it because that can cause uh, ripples in your icing. But also if you have a dehydrator, especially the kinds with the drawers, you can pop it in your dehydrator on the lowest setting for about 15 minutes. And that'll uh, crust it over faster for you if you're like impatient like me or you're trying to get a lot of them done. So TV magic, we're gonna pop this guy back over to the side and I'm gonna grab a dry one for us. Again, guys, if you have any questions, Emily is in the chat. So if you wanna ask me anything or if you're confused about anything I'm doing, please uh, go over there and ask her and she'll uh, let me know through Emily telepathy. Just kidding, she'll, she'll just tell me. Okay, so now we've got our dried cookie. And once it's dry, you can, I mean, you can touch this. It's not gonna uh, break. If you try to write on it or push on it too soon before it's dried all the way though, you can break through the crusted layer. So the key to royal icing is patience. My least favorite thing, but we have to be patient. <laughs> if you're uh, feeling stressed about his smile ending up crooked or something, we do have a template on there for you. I like to just kind of, again, I like to freehand it so they each have their own little personality. So I'm just gonna come in here with my Sweet Sugar Bell um, food color pen that I used to outline his face. And I'm gonna go ahead and give him a little uh, toothy grin for our Halloween skull. And see, you can tell my hand shakes really bad. So I always get really crooked lines, but I find that my cookie customers like when my cookies look homemade, 
not like they were made by a machine. So there you go. Pretty simple, but it makes it um, a very effective little skull. And he's very fun. If you wanted to, you could also like dust on some powdered food coloring on his cheeks, give him rosy cheeks. You could put flowers on this to make him more of a Dia de los Muertos, like Day of the Dead, uh, sugar skull. You could do a lot of things with this, but this is just our real basic skull. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next cookie. This next one, um, I thought was such a fun idea. We're gonna leave the cutter the same direction up and down, but we're gonna turn it instead into a crystal ball. I like to think that this is a crystal ball on a table with like a little purple uh, tablecloth. You could also make it look like, like a wooden stand or whatever you think makes it look the most like a crystal ball, but this is kind of how I pictured it. So we did get you guys a, a paper template. So if you cut out that template, you can use it to kind of separate your different spots for this cookie. We're gonna be working in three different sections, the crystal ball, the wooden uh, stand underneath it, and then the tablecloth underneath. So I'm gonna use this same sweet sugar bell pen and we're gonna come in just on our, on our blank cookie. I'm gonna get low again, because then I hopefully won't put my head in your way. And we're gonna round out this circle so that we have the uh, circular shape marked out for our crystal ball. And then we're gonna round out the bottom of this as well so that we have our wooden stand. And then our last piece will be our tablecloth. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pull out some more outline consistency icing. So these are icings that I mixed ahead of time with tips if you've already pushed icing through it the ends can get kind of clogged so i like to use my scribe tool and just poke it in the end of the tip and work it around and that usually gets rid of any clog you can also just wipe it on a wet cloth or a wet paper towel um we're not using green i don't know why i picked that up we're gonna do blue <laughs> how about so this is gonna look kind of like the glass of our crystal ball so I'm going to start by outlining the glass of the crystal ball with the blue. Again, just like we did with our skull, we want to make sure we let the icing do the work. Let it kind of fall down onto the cookie. And this is where this turntable comes in real handy because then I don't have to move my hand as much. And then just touch it down. And that gives us our circle for the top part of our crystal ball. Now we're going to go ahead and use some brown icing. And this one might also be clogged. So be very careful when you're doing this, though. Don't poke yourself. It is kind of a very sharp little needle. Hey, Emily, I have a question for you while you're doing yeah, that. What's that. There is a question asking, what's the difference between flood icing and royal icing? So flood icing is royal icing. It's just the consistency of the icing. So royal icing is the umbrella term. It is a royal icing is, is an icing that uh, dries hard with a shine to it. Um, flood consistency is when you water it down so that you can then flood in the cookie. And outline consistency is usually I use just the consistency right out of my mixer. And that's what I use to give these barriers so my flood icing doesn't just seep all over my cookie. Did that, did that make sense? Hopefully. Okay, so then I'm gonna pick up my purple and I'm gonna go ahead and outline with my purple icing and this one might also be clogged. That's the fun thing about royal icing is it does dry very quickly when it's thick like this. So you just gotta keep your tips either damp or be willing to clean them out. Um, if you don't wanna have to clean out your tips, you can always just wrap the ends of your piping bags in like a damp paper towel and that'll keep the tips from getting clogged. So now we have our basic outline. And with this cookie, when you're flooding different colors right next to each other and you don't want them to bleed together, you want to flood one at a time and then let them dry before you do one next to it. So for this cookie, I'm going to flood the brown first so that then I can flood these two at the same time. And then I don't have to, because they aren't touching each other. So we'll get the one that touches both of them done first and then go from there. So I'm just gonna let my, my outline dry while I kind of shake up my brown flood. 
Um, if you notice that your icing is starting to separate in your squeeze bottles, you can always um, stick like a dowel, something down in there to stir it up, or you can shake it and kind of squish it. And usually that'll unseparate it. I noticed that if I mix up my icings too early, they do tend to separate. So you can put them in the fridge or the freezer to keep that from happening, um, or just be ready to shake them or mix them up. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and flood this brown portion. So just be very careful. You'll notice this flood icing is a, even a little bit thinner than our white flood. So I'm not even gonna fill all the way to the edge because I don't want it to overflow. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it about that much and then just push the icing using my scribe tool all the way to the edges. Emily, I have a couple more questions for you. Yeah. How long can you store the icing and do you have to use the squeeze bottles for the icing? Yeah, so royal icing, the great thing about it is it's basically just sugar. So it will last for a very long time. Um, I haven't tested it, but I have kept royal icing in my freezer that's already colored for up to two, three months. And then you can use your colors to remix new colors using fresh icing later. Um, you can also in the fridge, it'll stay good for about, about a month. Um, you may have to remix it because it might separate. And then on the counter, about a week. But again, it may separate at room temperature. So I always prefer to keep it cool. And uh, as far as squeeze bottles, no, you don't have to use squeeze bottles. Um, I like them because they give me a lot of control over my icing and then I don't make as much of a mess. But you can definitely use just piping bags as well and they work too. Just make sure that you label your piping bags somehow so you know which one is your outline consistency and which one is your flood consistency because mixing those up can make kind of a mess. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a little TV magic here. We're gonna say goodbye to this cookie and we're gonna bring out one that already has that brown layer dry. So ta-da, that brown layer is now dry. We're gonna go ahead and flood our purple layer. So again, I'm just gonna take my squeeze bottle, make sure it's shook up. And because there's less icing in here, it might take me a second to get it to the bottom, but <laughs> we'll get it going. And then once again, just be very careful that you don't over flood the section because the last thing you want is icing going everywhere. It's always a bummer. You can always just, if you make a mistake, this is great for like scraping off mistakes too if it starts to flood over the edge or anything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill that in. And if you don't like the purple uh, tablecloth look on the bottom, you can always do something else. You can change the color. You can make it look more like a table legs, whatever you think sells the cookie for you. Okay. So again, I didn't fill it all the way. I'm gonna use my scribe tool to kind of push the icing to the edge and up against the edge of my brown icing so that I have a nice clean line there without it overflowing. And this is where this cookie does get a little tricky. We're gonna be flooding the top part using blue and purple. Um, and I will tell you that when I was practicing this, I over flooded it like four times. So we're going to hope that doesn't happen right now. But if it does, it'll be okay. We'll make it work. So we're going to uh, pull out our blue squeeze bottle as well. And I want it to look more like glass with like a swirl of mist in it. So we're going to do mostly the blue and then put a swirl of our purple and then kind of swirl them together. So this is called wet on wet technique. And the trick with wet on wet is you just need to make sure that you don't over flood. So if it looks like there's not enough icing, try scraping it around, only add if you really feel like it's not gonna fill it up. Cause I thought I was good several times. And yeah, my husband came in, what's wrong? I'm having a fit with icing. It was, it was a grand time. So we're gonna squeeze some of this blue and I don't wanna get too close to the edge this time because we are gonna be adding uh, the purple. So I'm going to do this in kind of a swirl pattern and leave space in between to add purple in. 
fingers crossed guys because <laughs> that blue is pretty thin if your uh flood icing is really thin that does tend to make it overflow a little more so i would recommend using less but we'll see how it goes <laughs> and don't worry if this isn't super clean because again we're going to be swirling these colors together to make it look kind of mystical oh, okay so now i'm going to take my scribe tool and i'm just going to kind of swirl these together and even in the middle here where it is fully flooded, I'm just going to go through and kind of swirl it so it looks a little smoky and mysterious. This is the cookie I've been most nervous about. <laughs> so, looking good so far. We'll try to. And if you want it to be less swirled together, you can kind of fill the icing in a little more. I just, I prefer to have it not overflow as opposed to having it look less swirled. So kind of, if you want to live life on the edge, I applaud you. Okay, so now that I've got that layer, we're going to do another tiny wet on wet technique. I'm going to actually take some, my white flood icing that we used for our skull, and I'm going to add some little stars to make it look like this is a shiny glass ball. So we're gonna just shake that to the bottom. I'm not gonna try and freehand stars because I'm not really an artist. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna squirt a little dot, a little dot of that thin flood icing, a couple of them here. Now, again, if you're doing wet on wet, this is adding more to the surface area so it could force it to overflow. So make sure you're being small and deliberate with how much icing you're adding. And I'm going to just take my scribe tool and in between each uh, time I swipe it, I'm going to wipe it off with a damp towel, but I'm going to pull out in four directions to give me kind of like a shine spot. So pull out from the middle. Whoop. See, and it's okay if you, uh, knock it in a weird direction there we go now we're kind of shiny and i might even just add like one little one over here just because i want to see if i can make it overflow just kidding i just think it'll look cool <laughs> so this is just a really easy way to um add a little extra detail to your cookies it's kind of a more advanced technique but you guys can totally handle it It'll make you look like you really know what you're doing. We're all about fake it till we make it here. So that's our uh, crystal ball all ready to go. And if you wanted to swirl that with a color other than purple, you could do green. If you have an airbrush and you like the idea of airbrushing it, that could also look really cool. Um, there's lots of different ways you could put that color in there. So we're gonna let that dry real quick and we're going to add just a little bit of detail to the bottom to make it look a little bit more like a uh, tablecloth but that's the basics of this one I'm feeling good we didn't overflow it so feeling feeling pretty proud of that okay so whew, once more we've got a finished one and as you can tell i over flooded this one several times and had to scrape it off you can see the the blue icing all along the edge where it died the edge of my cookie but you know what the person eating this is probably not going to care <laughs> especially if it's me which it'll probably be me <laughs> okay so once again i'm just going to pull out my favorite tool which is the food coloring marker it makes my life so easy to be able to add details with a marker as opposed to having to do it with um icing but i'm just going to come in on the bottom part of this like tablecloth section and I'm just going to add some little lines here to make it look like flowing cloth. So I like to do kind of rounded square uh, look to it. And you know, maybe it looks like cloth to me and it doesn't look like cloth to you, but that's fine. If you wanted to, you could also add maybe some wood grain detail to that uh, brown section to make it look like a wooden palette. But that's where I think I'm going to stop. <laughs> So that is gonna be our little 
crystal ball cookie. So I thought that was a fun way to use the uh, skull cookie cutter. So yeah, the nice thing about this 80 piece kit, I was telling um, Felicia actually, I am a hoarder of cookie cutters. So I own a lot, but I tend to use like the same 10, right? The ones that, that are versatile, the flowers that I can make look like different things. The, um, the ones that are like basic shapes, like circles and squares. Those are always really nice to have. This set is great because the way that Sweet Sugar Bell designs their cookie cutters, they make it so that you they're intended to be able to be flipped into something else. So we have one more flip for you with this uh, skull cutter from our 80 piece set. We're gonna flip it over and we're gonna turn it into a potion bottle with a cork in the top. That was the first thing I saw when I turned this over and I thought how fun because for Halloween you could put all kinds of things on there. You could do love potion, witch's brew, you know, all kinds of fun things written on there. You can do it in tons of colors. We're gonna do it in a generic green today, but feel free to be creative with that. So our last blank cookie, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is my outline again. And this time we really will be using the green. <laughs> so we're gonna grab that green icing. And if you see that it's kind of separating in the bag, like this one's been out of the fridge a little too long, you can just kind of mush it back together, like massaging your piping bag. will just kind of help mush the parts where it's separated back together and it should still dry just fine. The nice thing is, even though royal icing is finicky, it's pretty forgiving. Um, once it's made, it's hard to un like to ruin it. It's pretty hard to ruin it. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and outline. I'm gonna once again try to clean out the end of this tip, <laughs> and we're gonna go ahead and outline our uh, potion bottle. If you want, um, I'm probably just gonna freehand it. But if you wanted to pull out your marker again and put those lines in place. You know, I'll do it for you. We did give you a template too, so you, we can always trace that. This time I wanted it to go kind of down. So it looked like the lip of a jar. So we kind of made it go down slightly. And then for our cork, I like to give it like a top section of the cork and then the sides. So we just kind of separated that cookie into a couple of sections. And then we'll go ahead and outline those sections with our icing. So as you get more confident and you've done it for longer, you'll realize that it's super easy to scrape it off. And so you don't have to worry about it being perfect the first time. <laughs> um, but if you want it to be perfect, then outlining with a marker on there is a great way to get good results. So we're gonna go ahead and use our green. Oh, okay, see how I knocked the icing off the edge there? It's no big deal. We're just gonna bring in our scraper, scrape the edge, clean that off of our turntable so that it's not making a mess and just go back in again. And it's super easy to clean it up and try again. So we'll just pull the icing along. And that is something as you're learning to kind of trust where your icing falls, sometimes it falls off the edge and you can get better and better as you go at eyeballing how far away you can pull it from the cookie without it falling off the edge. So we're gonna, whoop. And just make sure you're keeping consistent pressure on your piping bag or you'll have that happen where you end up with more icing somewhere than you wanted. And then you can use like your smaller end of the scraper tool and just kind of clean it up so that you don't have a, a lump on the side of your finished cookie if you care, if they're going to someone special or something. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my squeeze bottle of green flood icing. Actually, no, I'm not. First, I'm gonna outline in brown. <laughs> so I'm gonna outline the whole cookie. So I'll do my cork as well. And I'm not gonna put two colors next to each other because that's kind of a waste of time. So I'll just use the edge of that green flood to keep my brown flood in as well because no need to work harder, let's work smarter. And then we'll go ahead and cut the edge up there. Good. So now we have it nice and outlined. Now we can pick up our green flood icing and go ahead and flood that cookie. See where we're at time-wise, we're doing good. 
doing great on time. Okay, so again, just like we did with our crystal ball cookie, we wanna make sure that we're flooding spots that don't touch each other first. So I'm gonna flood this smaller section of green and the top portion of the cork first, and then let those crust over before I flood these other parts. If you put a lot of wet flood all right next to each other, they tend to bleed together. But if you let it crust over, it won't do that. So we'll go hey, in Emily, with our green. Yeah. There is a question asking, what can you substitute instead of the two to three two teaspoons of the all-free extract or emulsion within the uh, icing recipe? In the icing recipe? Yes. Um, any flavoring you like, you can use in your icing. I tend to just do vanilla and just make sure that it's oil-free because you don't want it to break down the meringue. That's the biggest rule is um, meringues don't like fat in them and they will throw fit if you put fat in them. They will separate and they won't thicken. So I, I think that's probably the best option, but if you wanted to use like fresh lemon juice works really well, if you wanted to use that instead of a lemon extract and that I think tastes really good on a vanilla cookie, it gives it a little more difference in the taste. Um, gives it a little something more exciting. Um, so that can work. Um, and I've done all kinds of different flavorings. So I've done cheesecake flavored icing on like a pumpkin cookie. I've done peppermint icing on a chocolate cookie. So all sorts of different um, extracts or flavorings, just as long as they don't have any oil or fat in them, you should be good to go with royal icing. So I'm gonna go ahead and flood the top part of our cork here with some brown. And again, you can see I'm not going all the way to the edge because I don't want to over flood my cookie. I'm very paranoid about, I, I don't like cleaning up messy over flooded cookies. I, I end up doing it a lot because I get impatient and I want it to, I don't want to have to take the time to scrape it over to the edge, but I always get better results if I'm just a little bit patient. And I'm willing to just move my icing around by hand. I also prefer kind of a thinner flood too, so that it does a lot of the work for me, but um, then it tends to overflow a lot more often. So you have to kind of find that balance between a thin flood and a flood that's going to make a mess. <laughs> so now again, with our little TV magic, we're gonna go ahead and pass this off for one that's already dry. So you can see we flooded the top portion and this middle portion. So now these two are next to a dry layer. So you should be able to flood them without any problems. So since I already have my brown out, we're gonna flood the brown part of our, of our potion bottle cork first. I don't know if you guys can tell that I had to remake brown icing. So these aren't exactly the same color. That's okay though. Brown can be kind of tricky if you're having trouble with brown food coloring, giving you a deep brown like this. I start with a pale, it's gonna sound crazy, but if you mix like a mauve colored purple and a foresty green, it will give you a brown shade that then you can add brown food coloring to and you'll get a lot deeper color. Because brown is really just a mix of red, yellow, and blue evenly. But for some reason, that deep green and the light purple mixed together gives me the best brown. And that's just what I found. It's brown icing has been my nemesis for a long time. And if you're struggling with that still, you can always add just a little bit of cocoa powder to your icing with the brown, and that will turn it brown pretty quick as well. <laughs> and then it tastes great. It tastes like chocolate. Hey, Emily, do you know if Sweet Sugar Bell has their own brand of icing for sale? Um, we, they don't, Sweet Sugar Bell doesn't sell icing. No, she does have her icing recipe on uh, her blog. Um, and I always just recommend making your own icing. Um, and I just prefer to use whatever food coloring I have around. So I like, you know, just the Wilton food coloring that you can get anywhere or um, liquid gel. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure if you're using liquid food coloring that you don't add too much. Uh, or it could thin out your icing. Like, so be aware if you're adding a lot of uh, food coloring, you may have to add some powdered sugar to thicken your icing back up. 
or you might have to add less water. So I'm gonna go ahead and flood this green portion. And because we wanna make it look like a potion in a bottle, we're gonna add some white dots, kind of like we did with our uh, crystal ball cookie. So let's, but this time we're not gonna spread them out. So make sure we leave a little space in that we don't flood it too thick because we don't want the little white dots to make it overflow. So I'll just go ahead and flood this guy in, leaving a few little gaps there to give it room to fill in. Ooh, it looks like I'm squeezing this a lot harder than I am. And the thinner your flood is, the more it will like level out on its own. But again, you risk it flowing off the sides. It's all about finding that balance. And that's the biggest thing, the biggest learning curve with royal icing is consistencies. So I would definitely go on the Sweet Sugar Bell website and find Callie's uh, blog post about consistencies and read up on that. I find that that's really helpful. And watching like YouTube videos from cookie decorators and watching how their icing flows, that'll give you a good idea of how thick you're gonna want it. So now I'm gonna take my white again and we're just gonna add a couple dots to make it look like there's bubbles in our potion. We're gonna be very careful with the amount of white we add so we don't over flood. Let's see, we put a couple over here. So if you add it wet on wet like this, it should uh, dry completely smooth and your bubbles won't stick out. It'll look like it's inside the bottle still. Okay, so you can, it's kind of sticking out still when you first put it on, but if you kind of give it a tap, it should just level right in to the flood. Okay, so that's the basics of how that's gonna look. And now we'll set this one to the side and pull out a dry one to add some more detail to this to really make it pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the side. Last time. Movie magic. Here's our dried potion bottle. So as you can see, those dots dried perfectly flush. So it just looks like they're in the bottle there. Now to give our cork a little texture, I'm actually going to take um, my outline consistency icing and I'm just gonna squiggle it on each shape. And I like to use like any paintbrush that you have that's dedicated only to food. Don't use a paintbrush you used with paint, but any paintbrush you have, or you can use like the end of this or your scribe tool to kind of scrape it around and give it like that cork texture. So if this is not clogged again, sorry guys. I feel like we're dealing with a lot of clogged icing tips today. But... So I'm just gonna squiggle some icing on there and some on this top portion. And then I'm gonna use my brush and just stipple that all over to kind of give it like some fun texture. And this texture you can use for all kinds of things. I mean, you could use it to do like zombie skin. You could use it for, I mean, I'm trying to think Halloween examples, but there's lots of ways I've used this just to give interest to a cookie. So I always try to make sure that I keep that line separated though, that we worked so hard to get. So I'm gonna use my scraper and kind of go through the line just to kind of clean it up, make sure we still can see it. And you know, if you can't, oh well, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so now we have a little texture there on our, on our cork and you're gonna wanna let that dry all the way, but once it, if you're putting it up on top of a dried layer, it'll just add some texture. I would not recommend trying to put that on there until this cookie has dried for about two hours. Because if you do it too soon, it may look crusted over, but the underneath layer is so wet, you'll break through that crusted over layer. And that's a bummer when that's not what you want. <laughs> 
So now we're just gonna put something fun on the front of this potion bottle, give it a nice label again with our uh, food coloring pen. I think we're gonna call this one Witch's Brew and we'll see if I'm a good speller. W-I, yeah. And if you don't like your handwriting, you can always um, try to copy something else. Uh, you can always like cut a template if you wanted to and use it as a stencil. Um, so this one will be Witch's Brew. Okay. I hope I spelled that right, but here we are. <laughs> So now we've got a little witch's brew bottle. So this is just like a fun little way that you can use that cutter. Again, um, you could make it into a love potion. You could do it red or pink for Valentine's Day. Um, you could uh, color them like purple and orange and do a whole set of potion bottles with this cutter. And that's the nice thing again about the Sweet Sugar Bell cutters is that they are simple. And so they're able to be switched into so many different designs. So that's kind of all I have for you guys as far as instruction, but do you guys have any other questions before we take off? Any questions in the chat? <laughs> I have not seen any come through. Um, I've got a lot of cool things, uh, super cute, <laughs> awesome. love it. Um, so there's been a lot of thank yous. Good, again. well thank you guys. So basically, yeah. that's so far. That's that's what I'm seeing. Um, actually, a question just came sure. in. I uh, just wonder, do you prefer a particular brand for the food coloring? Um, I like the Americolor gel colors are one of my favorite. And then also, if you're going to buy food coloring online at all, they do have uh, a brand called. Shoot, and now I can't remember what they're called. But it's like a powdered food coloring. There but is. I use mostly Americolor. <laughs> And I know that you can buy powdered food colorings from Wilton as well um, at Michael's, I'm pretty sure. But. There's one customer, she just wanna thank you very much. She learned where she oh. kept failing in her oh, earlier good. attempts. <laughs> I'm so glad. And I will tell you guys, I've been doing this um, for about a year selling cookies. But before that, it took me about a year of trial and error and a lot of ugly cookies to get to this point. So if you're getting frustrated, don't give up. This is something that does take time to develop a skill, but um, the more patience that you have and the more classes and resources you're willing to use, it, the sky's the limit with what you can put on a cookie. So. And I just want to thank the cameraman because there was a question asking about a close-up on your finished cookies. <laughs> so Thank you for that. And then there's a question, um, I guess, if you would want, I guess, soon to be able to do a class about the wet on wet with the black and orange, or maybe if you could say something in regards to that. Uh, mixing black and orange in a wet on wet? Yes. Yeah. So if you're going to do a wet on wet with a really dark color like black and a really light color like orange, just be sure that you don't oversaturate your black icing with food coloring. The trick with black is that I like to take all of my old colors and mix every dark color I have and then add only the tiniest bit of black icing. And then I cover my uh, of black food coloring and then I cover my bowl with a wet paper towel and let it sit for about an hour um, and let it develop darker because the longer that icing uh, has the food coloring in it, the darker it's going to develop. And if you oversaturate it, like you want black immediately and you add a ton of black food coloring, then that black tends to bleed into your other colors because it has too much food coloring in it. So black is a game of patience. We have to let it develop because it may look gray when you first mix it up. And then once you leave it for a couple of hours covered with that damp towel, it'll then uh, get darker and darker until you end up with black. So yeah, my biggest suggestion would be just make sure you don't oversaturate that black or you may end up with some bleed, some color bleed. There was one more question. I think I'm just gonna kind of say this out loud. Again, this class was recorded um, and you can find the recordings on michaels.com slash classes, as well as the Michaels YouTube channel within 24 to 48 hours. Um, there is a question asking once again about the bottles in which that is exactly the bottle she used to outline before she yep. get the filling. 
Yeah, so for outlining, I actually just prefer piping bags because I feel like I can uh, control the pressure a lot more, but I do use the Sweet Sugar Bell number two tips. Um, or you can use, you know, like you can get Wilton number two tips at, uh, at Michael's as well. So any number two tip that's going to be small enough. A number three is just a little bit too big and a number one's just a little bit too small, I feel, for outlining. Um, but I prefer to use a piping bag just because it's a lot easier to control the pressure for outlining purposes. But in my um, squeeze bottles, I do also have the number two tip. And because the icing is thinner, it'll come out a lot faster through that tip. And then there's a question uh, about the meringue powder. Uh -huh. um, I, sorry, what about it? I think I think it's more so where it can buy it. Where you can buy, buy it. it. You can buy meringue powder. I know at Michael's you can get meringue powder. You can get it at most craft stores. Even most grocery stores carry um, like the Wilton brand of meringue powder. You can also get meringue powders on Amazon. Um, you'll notice in cookie blogging world that everybody has their preference on what kind of meringue powder they like. But everyone I've used has worked well for me. It's just kind of, as you get more advanced, you'll find that people have more preferences. But the, the Wilton brand that you can get at your grocery store works perfect for me. <laughs> and I just also want to remind everyone that there are other Sweet Sugar Bell classes that are also on our website as well as our YouTube channel. So if you're looking for any additional classes, you can find our recordings there. Um, and please also check out Michaels.com classes to see any upcoming classes. And so with that being said, I just want to thank everybody for coming and have a great day. Okay.